I sat there staring into nothing. You might wonder why. My wife, Jane, had just asked me to be a cuckold for a week. My name is Mike, and I knew the answer before Jane even asked, but I had hoped she wasn't that naive. I needed to catch my breath but wanted to answer calmly. This is the story of how everything went wrong in our relationship. If you're curious about the shocking events and the betrayal, stay tuned. Before I dive into my story, if you don't want your life to be turned upside down like mine, subscribe to my channel to learn real lessons from the real stories we share every day, just like mine. Also, share your thoughts about the shocking truth I've experienced in the comments, and please show your support by liking my video. Now that you've subscribed, let's dive into my story. A week ago, we were at my sister Barbara's barbecue. There were 15 couples there, the wine and beer were flowing freely. Good friends, good food, and a great time. Suddenly, someone yelled, let's play truth or dare. My sister Barbara, the host, started the game by daring her husband, Tim, to massage Karen's feet. Karen's husband, Jeff, just laughed and told him to wash his hands afterward because Karen had hard, bad feet. As Tim rubbed her feet, Barbara asked Karen how the cuckolding was going. A few husbands, including me, looked like someone had spat in our beers. Then Jeff messed with my head even more by saying, without bitterness, that Karen had three lovers now and was looking for more. I wanted to ask Jeff what was wrong with him and slap him, but my wife's glare could melt Alaskan ice. I grabbed another beer and kept quiet. Where is Captain Morgan when you need him, I thought. Listening to this was going to be hard. After about 10 minutes of Jeffrey recounting how hot it was to see Karen being with other men, I headed to the bathroom. I was in there for about 20 minutes, talking to myself. I had to keep my voice down, or people would think I was crazy. After calming down, I opened the bathroom door and found Barbara standing there with her hands on her hips, looking at me like I had ruined her barbecue. What's up, sis? I asked. Barbara, in her usual annoying fashion, said, how can you be so mean? Mean? What are you talking about? I haven't done or said anything, I replied. Barbara then proceeded to tell me that Jeff was showing his love for Karen by allowing her to do this and that when Karen finished exploring, they would be a stronger couple. How is sleeping with other men going to make a couple stronger? I asked. Barbara seemed taken aback by my bluntness. Has Tim opened his mind to this new idea of marriage? I asked Barbara. She admitted she had an ass to yet, wanting Jeff to break the ice with the other husbands first. For the first time in my life, I wanted to slap my sister Barbara. You must be out of your mind. If Tim agrees, I'll watch the kids while you're on your man hunting trips, but I'll never leave you alone with my wife again, I said. In return to the barbecue, Jeff was talking to Karen, Jane, and a few other wives. The guys were by the grill, waiting for me. Tim was the first to ask what I thought of the whole thing. If Jane tries that, I'll be out the door before you can scratch your left nut. I will not put up with it, and if I find out she cheated or planned on cheating, I'll divorce her before her lover's scent dries, I said. After my outburst, Jane said it was time to go. We said goodnight to everyone and left. We lived about 45 minutes from my sister, so it was a long drive. Jane immediately said, you shouldn't judge a lifestyle until you try it. I wondered if I wanted to start a fight or wait until we got home. Being an idiot, I chose to wait. The whole drive home, Jane talked about Jeff this and Jeff that. I wanted to tell her if she kept talking about Jeff, she could marry him. When we pulled up to the house, Jane started rubbing my leg. Oh yeah, here comes the real makeup session, I thought. Needless to say, it was a good night, and the next morning too. Jane got into it with me for seven days straight, at least twice a day. But on the eighth day, the campaign began. Mike, can I talk to you without you getting mad? She asked. Sweetie, after the week you just gave me, we can talk about anything, and I'll listen, I said. Jane looked worried but started with the usual, Mike, you know I love you, right? I love you more and more each day but I think we need to spice up our romance now. Being me, I wanted to roll my eyes. Okay, I'll let you finish before I say no, I said. Jane then asked if I loved her. If I truly loved her, I would become a couple for a week. 
She looked at me with big puppy dog eyes and a sad little girl expression. Jane, I love you, and I would do anything for you, but the answer to this is a resounding no, I said and walked out. I went to my favorite sports bar, Angels. The bartender, Kevin, makes a hell of a Long Island iced tea. Kevin, start me a tab. I want a beer, a Long Island, and keep them coming, I said as I drank away my pain. Guess who walked in? Jeff and Tim. They took the stools on both sides of me and looked at me like I had passed gas. Mike, what's the matter with you? Jeff said. What's the matter with you? You almost screwed up the barbecue we've been planning this for weeks, Jeff said. Tim patted me on the back and said, just listen, Mike. Tim and I have been filming Karen with the three guys she's been with. I'm playing along to get evidence for the divorce. In Texas, it still matters if the spouse cheated. Karen doesn't know, but I'm serving her with divorce papers and an eviction notice tonight. Why give her anything? She cheated on you, I asked. Jeff grinned. The house has a second and third mortgage, the car is leased, and I haven't paid in seven months. My paychecks go to my mom's account, and she's putting the money in an offshore account. The beer flowed, and I took a cab home. I think I got home at 3 a.m., but I wasn't sure. I passed out in the flower bed, and Jane found me there. She poured a bucket of water on me and had our dog lick my face. Mike, did you know? Jane asked. No, what? I replied. Karen got served with divorce papers and an eviction notice last night, she said. Good for her, I mumbled. So you knew, Jane pressed. No, I ran into Jeff and Tim last night, I explained. Jane then asked, Karen needs a place to stay for a week. Can she stay with us? Reluctantly, I agreed, but Karen's presence brought more chaos than I could have imagined. One night, Karen asked Jane if she could sleep with me for one night because she needed sex. Jane erupted in anger and threw Karen out. After Karen left, Jane and I had a serious conversation about our relationship. Mike, maybe I pushed too hard with all of this, Jane admitted. I just wanted to try something different, but I realized now that it was too much. I nodded, appreciating her honesty. Jane, I love you, and I'm willing to explore new things together, but within limits that we both agree on, we decided to attend couples counseling to work through our issues and improve our communication. It wasn't an easy road, but it helped us understand each other's needs and boundaries better. We also started setting aside dedicated time for date nights and activities we both enjoyed, rekindling the spark that initially brought us together. Through counseling, we learned to appreciate the value of mutual respect and compromise. Jane no longer felt the need to look outside our marriage for excitement, and I became more open to discussing our desires and fears. Our relationship grew stronger as we navigated these challenges together, and we emerged from this turbulent period with a deeper connection. Jane and I realized that communication and mutual respect are the foundations of a strong relationship.